When they first appeared at the end of Star Wars The Clone Wars' fifth season, the Jedi Temple Guard immediately caught viewers' eyes. They were decidedly cool looking between their outfits and their yellow bladed saber staffs, and naturally, many fans wanted to learn more about them. In time, we did learn a bit more about the Temple Guards, both in Legends and Canon, and we learned they were much darker in nature than we had previously thought. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Jedi Temple Guards, the full extent of their crucial role, and the dark fate that befell them during Operation Nightfall. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The role of Jedi Temple Guard was not a permanent position. Rather, Jedi Knights and Masters were rotated in and out of the role on a regular basis instead. But not just any Jedi were chosen to be part of the Temple Guard, one of the Order's most crucial subgroups. The Temple Guard was composed primarily of Jedi Sentinels, members of a Jedi subgroup that, by the time of the Clone Wars, had become pretty rare. Among casual fans, Sentinels are known mostly for their yellow lightsabers, but cool lightsaber blades obviously weren't the reason the Sentinels were chosen for the role of Temple Guard, rather it was their unique approach to the Force. You see, Jedi were generally divided into three main classes, Jedi Guardians, Jedi Sentinels, and Jedi Consulars. Guardians preferred to use the Force actively, using their gifts to battle the forces of darkness, while Consulars preferred negotiation and understanding, using the Force primarily to sense and interact with the minds of others. Jedi Sentinels, on the other hand, practiced a discipline that was sort of a mix of the two. They focused both on the direct and indirect applications of the Force, as well as the study of more practical skills, all in pursuit of a single goal, rooting out the dark side and bringing it to light. The Jedi Order believed correctly, that the dark side had to be completely eliminated to bring balance to the force, and the sentinels were the ones who did the elimination part. While guardians and consulars focused on preserving what balance the force already had, sentinels worked to tip the balance back toward the light, usually by seeking out and defeating darksiders. In that sense, they were similar to Sith assassins, except their techniques weren't nearly as sinister. Sentinels were skilled at sensing when the dark side was near, and it was for this reason that they were chosen to compose the Jedi Temple Guard. In general, the Jedi tended to staff their facilities with Sentinels, as the Sentinels' more practical skills proved useful for roles ranging from Quartermaster to Mechanic. But the Temple Guard instead made use of the Sentinels' skills with the Force. Sentinels' dedication to rooting out the darkness made them ideal candidates to keep the Temple safe from threats, as, theoretically, they would be the most able to sense threats to the temple and determine what they were. Sentinels were always the smallest class within the Jedi Order, but by the time of the Clone Wars, there weren't all that many of them left, for one simple reason. After the seventh Battle of Rusan and the supposed destruction of the Sith, most Jedi no longer saw the need to have a class dedicated to rooting out dark side threats, as there didn't seem to be any left. Over the course of the Republic Golden Age, the numbers of the Sentinels dwindled, and by the time of the Clone Wars, there weren't all that many left. Of those who remained, most served regularly in the Jedi Temple Guard or in other positions back at the Jedi Temple, and were rarely seen in the field. After the Battle of Naboo and the revelation that the Sith had indeed survived their defeat at Rusan, you might think that the Jedi Order would have made use of the Jedi Sentinels to hunt these new Sith down, but they didn't. At first, this was out of an absence of anything to go off. They knew next to nothing about the new order of the Sith Lords, and they weren't about to send a bunch of Jedi off into the galaxy to hunt down one or two beings. But during the Clone Wars, when the Jedi finally got some leads on the identities and the locations of the Sith Lords, they still didn't make use of the Sentinels, likely due to either the demands of the Clone Wars or the arrogant belief that the non-Sentinel Council members could do the job better. Thus, Jedi Sentinels only really got to put their talents to use as Temple Guards during the Clone Wars. But even though the Jedi Temple did experience multiple attacks during the conflict, which the Temple Guards surely helped to repulse, the skills of the Sentinels were largely wasted patrolling the Temple, especially with Darth Sidious on the loose. 
The temple guards only got their time to shine when Order 66 came through and Operation Nightfall began, when they staged a valiant but short-lived last stand against Darth Vader and the 501st Legion. As you might expect, the temple guard played a crucial role in that final battle. In Legends, it took the strength and skill of Darth Vader to defeat them once they had rallied in the depths of the temple. In canon, meanwhile, their defeat was largely because of the betrayal of one of their own, a Pawan Sentinel who would go on to become the Grand Inquisitor. The skill of the Temple Guards and of Jedi Sentinels in general made them priority targets for the troops that stormed the temple during Operation Nightfall. It's possible, however, that the Sith wanted them out of the way first, for other, less obvious reasons as well. As we mentioned earlier, the Jedi Temple Guards, as with all Jedi Sentinels, were trained to root out the dark side, which made them a major threat to the power of the Sith. Darth Sidious surely understood this, and this is probably why he stressed the importance of all the Temple Guard being converted or killed. If any Jedi Sentinels survived, they would be a threat to the Empire and the Sith who ruled it in secret, and the Temple Guards would have been doubly dangerous thanks to their in-depth knowledge of the Jedi Temple's layout. Being the paranoid old Dark Lord he was, Palpatine would have been extra sure that the Jedi Sentinels were dealt with, more so than he would have been for anyone who wasn't on the Jedi Council. By and large, the Sith appear to have been mostly successful in wiping out the Jedi Sentinels. At first, Sidious believed that Sentinels made up a disproportionate percentage of Order 66's survivors due to their knowledge of non-Force related survival skills. As a result, during the following stages of the Great Jedi Purge, he put an emphasis on hunting down and destroying Sentinels. This appears to have done the trick. No Jedi Sentinels are known to have survived the Great Purge altogether, and only two are known to have lived past the first few months of the Purge. Occasionally, however, the Sith chose to convert Temple Guards and Sentinels instead of killing them, as was the case for the Grand Inquisitor in Legends. This was because Fallen Sentinels were invaluable to the Sith, as their unique sets of skills worked just as well for the Dark as they did for the Light. In past conflicts between the Jedi and the Sith, the Sith had converted Dark Jedi Sentinels into Sith Assassins, deadly hunters that tracked targets through the Force. Sidious based his Inquisitors on the Sith Assassins, teaching them many of the same techniques and using them for the same general purpose, and thus, he would likely have sought out and groomed Sentinels to serve as his Jedi Killers during the Purge. The techniques of the Sith Assassins were pretty much the antithesis of those of the Jedi Sentinels, but their opposition made the techniques of one fairly easy for the other to understand. While Sentinels were trained to sense and draw out the dark side, Sith Assassins were trained to sense powerful targets and form bonds with them, which they would use to track them across the galaxy. This tracking technique was actually just a far weaker version of the infamous life drain techniques of Darth Nihilus. The most accurate way to describe the abilities of the Sith Assassins was to say that they fed on the strength of the Force in their targets, using it to amplify their own power. Obviously, the glory days of the Sith Assassins were long gone by the time of the Empire's rise, but through the Inquisitors, Darth Sidious at least tried to revive some of their Order's teachings. Sidious had made use of Sith Assassins before. Maul, for example, was trained as a Sith Assassin instead of a Sith Lord, though he never quite learned the techniques that made Sith Assassins special. If Jedi Sentinels could be turned, however, they would be Sidious's key to bringing back the Sith Assassins as they had once been. So those are the dark truths of the Jedi Temple Guards, the stoic Sentinels that kept the Order's headquarters safe. But what do you think? Are there other Jedi classes that you'd like us to take a look at? Which one is your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you run off guys, if you're interested in high quality weekly videos of badasses from all different eras of history, make sure you check out our new channel called The Braved, where once again we post high quality weekly videos to satisfy that history itch of yours. First link in the description below. And if you just want to jam out to some music, check us out on our Relax Jack music channel. A lot of the music on there we use in the videos here, so make sure you check them out. 
And if you want access to some exclusive content and an exclusive behind the scenes discord where you can chat to myself and the team who make these videos and other patrons there as well, then check out our patron link in the description below. And if you just want to join the wider community, check us out on our discord and our up and coming new Geatsleys gaming network. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.